Welcome to section 2 Creating a mobile game with Unity. In this section, first we will set up our Unity game project. Then we will add some movements to our player. After that, we will add some obstacles to the game. And in the whole section, we will build the core gameplay of our game. So, this is the first video setting up a game project in Unity. In this video, We'll create a new Unity project. Then we're going to import the assets that we require. And finally, we will set up the basics of our game. So let's get started. As you can see, I have opened up Unity Hub here. From here, I will click on this new button to create a new project. Then I'm going to give it a name Endless Dodge Game. Then I will choose 2D as the template and then you can also set a location where you want to save it and after that simply click on create project and it will create a new project for us. As you can see Unity has finished creating a new project for us and this is how it looks like. Now if you go to the top right corner you will see here we have something called layouts and here we have something called default written. So this is the default layout of the Unity editor. From here, we can select different other layouts like this 2x3 layout or this 4 split layout or anything that you want. Now, for this game, first of all, we will select the default layout. Then, as you can see, here we have this scene tab and here we have this game tab. Now, we want to see both of these things together at the same time. So, I will drag my select my scene tab and drag my game tab like this on the right side and dock it right on the right side. So now as you can see, we can see the scene tab as well as the game tab at the same time. Now anytime if you want to go back to the default editor layout, you can simply go here and click on default and it will go back to the default layout. Okay. So now you can always press Ctrl S to save your scene. Now as you can see inside this assets folder, Unity has already created a scenes folder inside which we have this sample scene save. You can right click here and click on rename and name this scene game because this is the game scene. Now you can press Ctrl S or simply go to file and save and it will automatically save the scene. Now we need to import the assets that we need for this game. So as you can see inside this projects folder, we have this assets folder and here we're going to import all the assets that we need for this game. With this course, you will get some assets that you can use with this game. As you can see inside the assets folder, you get some fonts, some scripts and some sprites. Now, these sprites are what we're going to use in the game and we will also need these fonts for this game as well. So we're going to first import the sprites folder and later we're going to import the fonts folder. So we're going to drag and drop the sprites folder right inside the assets folder. And as you can see the sprites have been imported. The same way we can also drag and drop the fonts and as you can see the fonts have been imported as well. So if you go to the sprites folder, you will see we have something called player sprites inside which we have all the player sprites. Also we have three other sprites. This is what we're going to use as our background and this is what we're going to use as our ground and this is what we're going to use as our enemy. So first of all, I will select my background and I will simply drag and drop it right inside the hierarchy tab. As you can see, our background is now here. I'm going to go and select this one, right click and click on rename and I will rename it as background. Okay. Now we need to make sure that this is in the center. So we will go to the inspector tab, click on this gear icon and click on reset. It will make the position of the background at 0, 0, 0. Then we need to make it a little bit bigger so that it fits our whole camera. To do that, we will simply select our background, go to the pixels per units, 
and make it 60 and after that simply click on apply and as you can see as soon as we made it 60 and clicked on apply it became bigger now if you go to the game tab you will see here we have free aspect written now from here we need to set a resolution for our game so from there we will click on this plus sign and for the width we will write 1920 for the width we will write 1080 and for the height we will write 1920 and then we will give it a name like let's say HD and then we will click on OK. As you can see in my case I have already created a screen like that. Okay, here as you can see I have 1080 by 920 already created so I will simply select that. For your case you might have to create that from scratch. So this is the screen resolution that we are going to use for our game. So now we have the background set up for our game. So whenever you make any changes, make sure to press Ctrl S on your keyboard to save all the changes. So now we need to create the ground. So I will simply select this ground sprite and drag and drop it in the hierarchy. As you can see this is where it has been positioned. Now I can select this move tool and position it right where we want it to be. Let's say at about here. We can obviously change its position later whenever we want it to. So I think for now I'm gonna keep it here. And now we need to make many more instances of this ground to fill up this whole space. To do that, first of all, let me go ahead and right click and rename it to ground. And then I can simply right click and press duplicate or I can press Ctrl D on my keyboard to duplicate this ground. So first of all, I'm going to click on this duplicate button. And as you can see, a new ground has been created with the name ground1. Now I can simply move it a little bit with by using this move tool. Then I can use my mouse scroll wheel and rotate it to zoom in here. Then I can select this rect tool. And as you can see, now we have these four different dots. Now, to easily snap these two things, I can simply press the V key on my keyboard. And by pressing the V key, I can select any of this. So let's say I select this one, press the V key, and now I can simply drag it to easily snap it with this one. Now we need to do this multiple times to fill up this whole space. Now let's select this ground one one more time. Right click, click on duplicate. Then I'm gonna move it on the right side. Then I'm gonna zoom in, press the V key, select this blue dot and drag it to move it here. The same way we need to do it a couple more times. I'm gonna select this one, press Ctrl D this time to duplicate, move it here, press V key, select this blue dot and drag it. One last time, press Ctrl D, move it, Press the V key and drag it to do it like this. Now as you can see we have created the whole ground right here and we have this whole place filled up. So I think this should work good. But for our security I'm going to do this one more time. So I'm going to press Ctrl D one more time. Move it here. And then I'm going to press the V key and drag it like this. So now we have all the ground pieces created. Now we need to move all these ground pieces together inside another game object so that we can keep them organized. So to do that I will click on create, create empty and I will name it ground holder. Then I will select my first ground object. Then by pressing shift key I will select my last ground object and I will drag and drop all of the ground on my ground holder. Now as you can see all these grounds are child of this ground holder object. I can simply click on this triangle button to show it or hide it like this. So now I can select my ground holder, click on the move tool and position it wherever I want it to. So let's say I position it like this so that we have this one in the middle. Okay, so I think this should work okay. So this way we have created our background, our ground holder and our game basic has been set up. 